Welcome back, everybody, to the Omniverse Comics Guide podcast. We are your hosts, the Omniverse Comics Guide. Guys, there's our names. That's him. That's me. How is everybody doing tonight? For everybody that is watching on Twitch, thank you for tuning in live once again. If you're watching on YouTube or listening on your podcast of preference while you're going to work, on the train, on your commute, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Share it with your friends if you like what we're talking about. It's always good stuff to read. And of course, visit the Omniverse Comics dot guide website wonderful website for reading orders i use it for my own interviews and episodes so i'm saying as a guy who who needs something like that it is the best you'll find dave how the hell are you i am hell (laughs) otherwise lovely thank you erickson so how about you man what's going on what's happening in the world of you well, I finished a couple of omnibuses <sighs> in the month of March. I think I got three in. What? Two, yeah, two of them were sh- like smaller ones. I finished off with Eye Zombie, which was a lot of fun. Oh, I do really love great that book. series so much. Uh, yeah, I think it was your recommendation that made me put it on my incoming list one mm. month. Oh, and then oh. I ended up finding it for a really, really great price. Like even... It was an older printing of the book, so it was like yeah. such a steal, and it and it was a great blind buy. So I'm, I was really happy with that one. And now I am into X Factor by Peter David. All the X Men talk and the Peter David talk just went, and I just said, let me read some X Factor. So I finished up the Madrox. Oh wow! Five issues. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's so a, I'm in. I said, yeah, it's a it's a decent series that Madrox one, but it's not as strong as the the ongoing. You can see where you can see where he can take it though. Yeah, you're like, it's set up. Oh, yeah, there's a little setup there, and you're like, okay, this could get either hacky or interesting. Yeah, let's see where this goes. And all, all critical reviews have said that it just gets better. Mm-hmm. It does. So I, I figure, I figure the Madrox stuff is just like a appetizer. Yeah, pretty much. That's way to look at it. Before we get into uh, this week's discussion of our most wanted DC omnibuses, I think it would be fitting that we kind of acknowledge Ed Piscor, who uh, tragically uh, lost his life. And he loved comics as much as we do. He made some great comics. If you like comics, check out Hip Hop Family Tree. A lot of the artists that were featured in this biography of hip hop history, they stand by the book. So, I mean, that says a lot about the quality of what this kind of represents for comic books and for hip hop, because there was a time where not a time, I think there still is where the two worlds collide quite a bit. Yes, they do. Rest in peace to Ed Piscor. Read comics, everybody. Enjoy them. Love them because the people who make them express so much of what they love to the world through them. That's why we do this. I've actually picked up a couple of books this this week. Do you want to have a nose? Yes, I would. Let me have a sniff. Oh, have a have a sniff of this. This is uh, this is Scarlet Couture from Des Taylor. It's just just arrived on my doorstep today. It's the second book in in the series, and I wanted to put it in the ones to look out for for this month. And I just ran out of spots. If you haven't heard of Des, you can watch the interview. I did a collect item special with him. Watch that and have a laugh. He's a really funny guy. I didn't pick this up this week, but I have started reading this today. Uh, JV. Is it Tanwatko? Apologies if I've not got that right, but it's Third World Power. So I've started reading that today. And that comes from a tree in Barney who are distributing these books in the UK. So if you want to get some some Filipino comics, and there's tons to choose from. It's all really different and interesting stuff. And I also picked up uh, something. I picked up a literal segue. Do you want to have a look? The Spectre. Wrath of the Spectre. Omnibus. It's so spectry, they named it twice. <laughs> this is really hard to find really really hard it was going for a grand in some places wow yeah that's that's uk money uk money yeah that wow so you you got it for a steal i got it for a steal yeah that's great that's yeah. the that's the best isn't it that's the best i was so yeah, excited it's... i don't know when i'm gonna read it but i'm so excited just to get it because it's like bronze and silver that's... age stuff as well which is my yeah. my bag at the moment i love that you're so digging that right now mm, it's cool i don't it's know cool. many people who have like, that i know who are like into that era particularly dc uh-huh. I, I think if you lived through it and you read them then you like know it yeah. but you're like i'm i'm in 
Yeah. I want it all. I want to read all of this nonsense. Well, it's like when you read some of the modern stuff and you go, the science of this makes no sense. But you can read the old stuff and not care that the science of it makes no sense. You're just going, this is weird. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> They're just having, they don't know better. No. Right? They exactly. don't know any better. You put yeah. your head in that space and just go, okay, George. And you just read through whatever crap comes to the next page. And it's brilliant. I love it. I get it, though. Yeah. I've been reading Batman and the Outsiders, oh, which isn't. I really want to get out of. Ooh. Which isn't quite 70s, but it's, you know, not too far. It's adjacent. There's still a, a, a certain. I think before yeah. Crisis, there's a certain yeah, it's early yeah, 80s, 82, yeah, 82, 83 I think you're right. sort of era. Yeah, mm -hmm. you feel that. I don't know, a little bit of the 70s still attached to it, but again, still very 80s, and yes. some of the scripting is a little whatever. It's a bit, but yeah, don't but care. there's a bunch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just exactly. It's like yeah, it's comic book. Some of like the costume designs are terrible. It's like when you when you look back on Cyborg's costume though from the early 80s, and you go, "This is one weird, kinky, pseudo Robo fetish outfit." What? Who designed it? Perez? <laughs> yeah, and you kind of. All right, he's kind of. Kind of kinky with his costume yeah, design. He's got right? stockings <laughs> on. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay. My number one for tonight, dude, my first choice is a nice easy one to start. And it's a series I've been reading a lot of lately. So even though I've got trades, I would really want to see this it probably a place on my shelf. This is Birds of Prey. Uh, I mean, you could call it volume one or you could call it by Chuck Dixon. So you could break it up that way by writer. As long as they include everything, that's the point of an omnibus. I was saying to you earlier about getting grief from someone on uh, some random play. It might have been Reddit or whatever. I don't know. Posting a video about the missing issues in, in Green Lantern Call Omnibus. And someone went, right. you omnibus people, <laughs> you omnibus people, dirty, one in every issue involved. Like, well, that's the point <laughs> of buying a big chunky, hello. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but then DC have had this habit of doing it by creator, and then if there's an issue that's not by the creator, they leave it out. So you've got one or two issues missing, which just seems a bit silly. So, Birds of Prey by Chuck Dixon, or whatever you want to call it. What I'd like to see is Black Canary Oracle, Birds of Prey number one, Birds of Prey one to twenty one, uh, the Manhunt miniseries one to four, the Birds of Prey one shots, Black Canary, Batgirl, Revolution, Ravens and Wolves, Nightwing forty five to forty six, and Showcase ninety three number three. Just those. DC please. hire this man. There you go. What more do you need? He's got it laid out for you. There you are. That's Get it, it to the printers. That comes to about eight hundred and something pages, so it's not too much. You could you could go further in volume one. You know, some books wow, are around the Wow, that's a really good. That's a really good volume one. Just yeah. to get like, get a taste of what that world might be like, and mm -hmm. and feel the whole. Feel the whole. Because then it <laughs> you can feel the whole kind of universe <laughs> that it spins into. It's making me clench every time. <laughs> oh boy, whatever. Who are you yeah, looking yeah, for no, out the window? That's, that's a really you. good. Uh, that's a really good. <laughs> I didn't go into that much detail with my omnibus. You guys, that's all right. I'm a nerd. Anyways. Don't worry. I mean, God, look at that website. <laughs> it's but that honestly though, you that like those are the people we want. You're the type of people we want making, mapping the books. Yeah, get that guy who does the reading order that makes it easy for us to know where we're at. <laughs> He's doing it for free. <laughs> right. Get him in. What the heck? Yeah, no, it's good. Good. Uh, I haven't read all that stuff. My Birds of Prey reading is limited to some of the Gail Simone stuff that I thought was really good. Mm-hmm. I haven't read all of it, but I've heard that the Chuck Dixon stuff where it begins is pretty strong Chuck, as well. So Yeah, Chuck Dixon didn't want to do the book. Like he refused numerous times and it, it, it didn't really launch for a long time. They did lots of little one shots and stuff, and I think it was teased for a, at least two years almost. And then they did the first year, which was good. And then by the time year two rolls around, like issues thirteen upwards, it really starts to come together. Black Canary's just a fantastic she's she's hit my top five now favorite characters from dc i love her i think she's brilliant and then oracle i know people love oracle black canary just edges it for me but yeah oracle's great in it and their relationship is great and black canary doesn't necessarily know who's giving her these jobs so it's quite an interesting dynamic it's a fantastic series and it's not always super heroic sometimes it is you get some joker in there you get some bane in there and stuff but you sometimes it's just it's 
international criminals, drug dealers, and yeah, it's a real yeah. mix. No, I, I I totally get it. Dinah Lance, because I want to say, yeah, I got a I got a thing for Black Canary too, and it's gonna sound so <laughs> naughty, but <laughs> the truth is, even in the Green Lantern books from Mike Grell, that character and the way that she's featured there is just an interesting layered type of character, you know, and yeah. and the more anytime she's involved on a team or in a book or or featured i i always enjoy that particular character being involved in terms of the the way the team works and her kind of essentially leading birds of prey but a lot of the time it's just her in those early, early issues and a lot of the time she's also not even using the screen powers that much so it's all about her ability and strength of character and strength of will that's great right. writing she's got a sonic scream but there's way more to her than she's got a sonic scream yeah, no. So I, I've enjoy, always enjoyed that character being featured, mm, and she's she's cool. Main, yeah, she's a cool character. You're right. Good, uh, very cool pick. Thank you. I'm surprised they haven't made that yet. It feels yeah. like well, it's bat adjacent as been... well. Yeah, and there, but there's been a terrible film. Why hasn't it been released in conjunction with the terrible film that I haven't seen but judged? <laughs> yeah, I saw the film. It was. It wouldn't be representative of the book. No. That's the thing. I get that impression. Right? Like, you get, you're presenting this in order for it to have some sort of tie into the comic so you can maybe market certain things. But the real good stuff of why that name is significant, it's not representative of each other. So you can't really sell that book. No. No, you can't. It's weird. They it, did actually release a book with a Chula Lote cover, though, that was, it was called Birds of Prey Black Canary. It wasn't a Birds of Prey series. And then they put the film version of her on the front. They don't even look yeah. the same. Like they're completely different races. So you've yeah. got a front cover with someone that doesn't look like the character in the book. And it's just like. <laughs> yeah. It's like, is it it's, cake? They're two different things. Yeah. Name the same. Yeah. Right. Good. Good pick though. I like that. Thank I like you. That you built, built a book. It's the first time I think I've we've done that. Right. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you did. Trust me. But it's like it's going to get worse. <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay, this is my number one. Number one wanted maybe Omnibus, and I've mentioned it before. So this is I'm going to just get it out of the way of which one I want. It's Action Comics Superman by Dan Jurgens during the Rebirth era. It would collect issues 957 to, I guess, up to 1,000. And what would really be nice is if they could include the three-issue crossover from Superman – and then there was a mini series, Max. I'm not sure how. Yeah, it would probably be a mini series, seven, eight issues of uh, the Road to Rebirth. Yes. Of that was the Su Superman Lois and, and Lois. Lois. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, from Dan Jurgens, Lee Weeks. Mm -hmm. We could kick the series off with that. Get into the Rebirth. Yeah. And then that whole collection, one omnibus. It would be great. And Justice League number fifty-two. There you go. <laughs> the, when Thank Lex you, becomes Super Lex. It's a really fun Superman run. It's great. It's just, I've read yeah. I've read quite a bit of Superman, and for a guy that wrote, you know, kind of Superman in, in its selling heyday, where the death of Superman was written by Dan Jurgens, like mm -hmm. he's a pretty significant Superman writer, he's doing stuff and still keeping it fresh. It feels reminiscent, but not retro. Yes, to me. and and you also are like whatever may feel retro. It's like well. That is his character. Like, yeah, he did that. That he created that character. This is with who his you team, wanted. But... <laughs> this yeah. is the Superman you wanted. You've got him, Sharp. <laughs> right, right. So I would. I just. I ha It would go great with the other Superman, Rebirth Omnibus, Superman and Son, right? Because yeah. that's collected. Let's get this one made already, please. They could include the missing issues that went in that book as well. In the in Superman and Son, they didn't yeah. include the Tomasi. The non Tomasi issues. That's right. So they could stick those in the action one, and then you've you've got a complete set. That would be great. You great know, point. people, and you're complete. <laughs> hey, we just want a complete story. Yeah, That's it. we're here for story. We just want it we... all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're greedy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my that's my number one pick all around. And that's all I'll say about it. I've said enough. I think from three up three years in a row, I feel they're gonna make it though. My number two this week should be no surprise. Well, it will be a surprise. It doesn't matter. It might be. It might not be. I don't know. Well, let's see how surprised you look. 
it's a Bronze Age omnibus, and it's <gasps> no, no, you don't say. For real? World's finest, the Bronze Age, Volume One, two, however many it takes. Gimme, 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 gimme. Probably three. I don't know, two or three volumes. World's Finest was Batman and Superman. It was a Batman and Superman team up. Every month they teamed up because Batman and Superman before Crisis were pals. They were buddies. They hung out, you know, and it wasn't like (laughs) post-Crisis when Batman's are like, I don't know if I trust the alien. And even more so in New 52 is like, definitely doesn't trust the alien. But before Crisis, they're friends and they face some weird stuff like the composite Superman Batman there's an issue where their sons are involved in it, their future sons, the future sons of Superman and Batman. And it's just fantastically weird, goofy, ridiculous comics. And that's so my thing right now. But I mean, from the start of the Bronze Age, so we're looking at World's Finest or World's Finest Comics, as it's sometimes known, 190 to the end. Issue 323. But in that time, there's all sorts of craziness and there's some amazing stuff and some amazing covers. But there's this fantastic Man Bat cover where Man Bat is wrapping himself around Batman, around Superman, sorry. And I've never wanted a comic so badly. It's just, it looks great. It's probably awful. And I know I'm going (laughs) to love it. If you look it up, issue 258, it might actually be Batman turned into a bat. I've never read it, but this is the problem. It's really hard to get hold of these issues, even on the DC app, which we talked a little bit about last time, and a lot of the stuff that wasn't great about the DC app, for an app that I think is probably my favourite app on my phone. Mm. That A lot of that stuff's been fixed. So it's a it's a really worthwhile app. But one of the issues they've got... Internet pump. One of, the, one of the main issues with it was that there's a lot of missing stuff, especially around the, the bronze and, and some of the silver age. And that would be something they'd need to rectify. Even some of the stuff they put into Omnis, like House of Mystery and House of Secrets, uh, they're not on there. And maybe they will be over time. Maybe it's just a time thing. But I'd love to see more of those on there. But, I mean, we're talking about Omnis, and that is one Omni I would love to see. It's just the pure, gleeful cheese of Superman-Batman team-ups that were appearing every month through the 1970s and early 80s. And it, it actually finished... When did it finish? 1986... So it kind of really marked that end point of like this era is done. And it was just, it's just fun, man. I I love this kind of fun, stupid stuff. It just makes me happy. So I know very little about it. I've never read any of it, but I want it. And I could just list a whole, I could basically do tonight just five Bronze Age books that I really want to see. But that's the one I've chosen because it's just, it's it's just great. Look at it. I've, I've been tempted in the past to uh, get into a certain era of the Justice League in the Bronze Age just because of the creative teams that were on Mm. it and and kind of like the the stories they were getting to tell a little bit more. Yeah. So I just wanted like I wanted to see those characters as a team and and like those they're not the golden years but the Bronze Age but it's kind of like a sweet spot of the Justice League where they're your they're the DC comic book team and all the heavy hitters are together and it isn't a, you know, it's just classic. It just looks so It's an all-star classic. team. It's a proper yeah. all-star team book. More so than the Avengers were, really. Because I guess Superman and Batman were better known. Wonder Woman were better known than the Avengers. Any of the Avengers at that point. Maybe apart from Cap. But oh yeah, goodness, I've got the Silver Age one here. With a Darwin Cook cover. Oh, That's nice. Can't go wrong with that. But look at how cheeseball it is. It's just... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't normally do this bit. You know that's awful. You know it's going to be terrible. But I'm just going to be so happy. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about it, man. I can't help myself. Yeah, and sometimes you just want to, you just want to get back into good old fashioned little soap opera drama within the team or the the characters and a monthly story, villain of the month. Yeah. Sometimes that's okay. And if you get a two issue, three issue sort of storyline, you get a lot of story in those three issues. Wow. Like they pack it with information. You felt like you've read a twelve issue series sometimes with how much story you get out of them. Yeah. So much it's fun. unnecessary dialogue. Great. So much. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm gonna have to stay on the need. toilet twice as long to finish this issue. <laughs> Yeah. That's why Uh, I eat more now. All right. My number two. So this is a, I think a 36 issue would make a 36 issue omnibus, give or take. 
John Ostrander, Tom Mandrake. Last episode, I mentioned their book, Spectre, which you're a big fan of. Wow. I've never but I want to. <laughs> well, you got the book. I got the book. But in this case, it was the other book they worked on, which was Martian Manhunter. Ah. And I have two trades that collects, I think, the first 16 issues or so. I think maybe more. seven, Maybe 1 to 17. Somewhere around there. It's a nice chunk of issues. So what is remaining is the – I think it goes up to issue 36 or so. Okay. So the, the next half. It never came out. It was Uh-oh. never completed. And I think for the most part, it's the same creative team that sticks through it to the end. I feel it's a pretty – popular character there's a following for it it should get a little bit more love and what they did with the character was probably the most in-depth that that a team has gone up to that point where they've given that much time to like even explaining the whole weakness to fire and things like that they oh. made it they made it make sense they made it like oh okay it's not just a you know 60s or Silver Age sort of cheesy idea because everyone needs a weakness, which it probably was back probably, then. Probably, but but they made it. Yeah, it's like what Peter David did with the Hulk. You know, it's yeah. like oh, like they made it something cool. So I would really love to see that get some love. Martian Manhunter, John Ostrander uh, with Tom Mandrake would uh, be a great omnibus, and I think people would would really be happy to see something like that come out. My opinion. You're right as well. It's 36 issues plus an issue 1 million, which is the only issue I've read. No, I've read one other one, but I can't remember what it was. It was a tie-in. Oh, it was a tie-in to an event. Day of Judgment. No, it's... uh, Yeah, I think I've met... Most likely have mentioned it in other episodes, probably Hidden Jam or something like that, because it is one of those books that just... It it would really stand on its own if it got a little bit more of that post publishing push you know how that happens sometimes where people start to talk about things and and just by the fan to fan conversation about it it becomes a little bit more recognized i think Mm. this book deserves it but maybe it's my memory being nostalgic about it it was good it was really good and john ostrander is a good writer yeah well the thing is it's nice to see those kind of more even though he was in the the big seven jla with grant morrison he's always been like the lesser remembered character more often than not and i think they're always the more interesting ones all right my numero three oh again this isn't overly surprising i know i've mentioned this a few times i think i've mentioned it whenever i've talked about sixth gun never been a big cullen bunn fan he produces a lot of comics but he doesn't always hit the mark for me well very rarely hits the mark for me if i'm totally honest but there are two books he's written that i'm big fan of one sixth gun as I just mentioned, from Oni Press. The other is Sinestro. So I'd like to see a Sinestro by Cullen Bunn. It would include... Hmm. <laughs> it would include Green Lantern 23.4, Sinestro 1 to 23, Sinestro Annual Number 1, Sinestro Futures End Number 1, and maybe the whole Godhead event. I'm not sure. I'm not... A... It's the tricky thing with the crossovers, because like I guess the perfect way to collect any green lantern stuff is just to keep it all together and put it all in order but they tend not to you know we've we've seen the jeff johns run collected as three books and now there's two books of glc Mm. um but you can't if you want to read it together you've got to let some mook work up a reading order it's coming i assure you i've just found a load of other issues that go between certain stories it's just slowed (laughs) me down anyway i i promise you it's coming but that's what you've got to do or happen to know or just be patient or not care and read it separately there you know it's up to it's up to the, the individual but by the new 52 era there were quite a lot of green lantern related books there was a um, new guardian series there was a red lantern series it got not messy there were just more titles so sinestro technically could be included in that more complete collection of omnis or they could just do what they've been doing, which is kind of separate them out, which I think they're probably more likely to do, and give Sinestro his own book. I'd love to see Sinestro's name across the spine of a book on my shelf, just because I love that character so much. You know, so he's got a big old pink head. Yeah, I think a pink head would be the right description. Bulbous, I think, is probably the description, isn't it? 
uh, when he gets angry, he gets really veiny. So the problem you've got with Godhead is that when they collect them separately, it means that an event like Godhead would end up either being in multiple books or there would be chapters in some and not in other, and it gets messy. But it's up to the, you know, you could argue away that point forever. It's a crossovers are a pain in the butt, frankly. As much as I love them, they're a pain when it comes to collected editions. But as for the rest of the series, it largely stands alone. It's got Soranik Natu, who is one of my favourite Green Lantern Corps members. She is a major player in this book. And if you haven't read Green Lantern Corps Omnibus yet, I'm not going to say why she's important to this book. But she is, and she's brilliant. And another character I desperately love. DC do some great female characters. Like yeah. Big Bardo, yeah, you're, you're Soranik right. Natu, Black Canary, Oracle. You could just keep going. And Sinestro is just a fascinating villain. Because one of the things that makes him so good is that he just thinks he's right. And in some ways you could argue no, that maybe he's, he is right. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really interesting corners of the DC universe to explore. That isn't necessarily in your biggest named characters or what the most popular book might be. You know, mm. you know what I mean? Like it's, there's a lot more to it than just Batman books. Yeah. A lot. Right. And, a and lot. Superman. Uh -huh. and some really interesting characters just like anywhere right yeah there's a lot more to marvel than wolverine and spider-man yeah so much more you'd be surprised so yeah don't don't write anything off but well, that's cool don't you panic it's not a mistake it's time for the omniverse ever break yeah let's have a look at what's on the omniverse shall we reading order wise we have wonder woman the new 52 era that's the entire 2011 to 2016 complete Wonder Woman reading order, which includes the Brian Azzarello and Cliff Chang stuff. Also, Jeff Johns' Justice League from that era. It's all tied in, plus every other Wonder Woman appearance you can think of. If I have missed any, please tell me. I will cry, but I will, I will then include it. I've made it as complete as possible, and it is chronological. That's awesome. That was a lot of work. She was on... <laughs> Hence it being a, there's not as much to mention this week because it's been a massive amount of work. Podcast and video. We've got top 10 90s X-Men stories. The slightly edited version, also the full length version is available for anyone who's a subscriber to the site. There will be more subscriber stuff to come as well. The longer versions of the episodes are always included as rough cuts. So there's no editing. It's just bang, here it all is. Everything we talked about, including bits I probably should take out in hindsight, but never mind, they're there now. On top of that, you also get What to Read Before, The Many Armors of Iron Man, The Book of the Dead, Where Are They Now? And there is a new DC-centric one, so that is coming soon, because otherwise it was very heavily Marvel, so I wanted to make sure there was a nice mix in there. I don't know how he does it, but he can. No one does it like Dave. <laughs> That's what my wife says. If anyone hasn't seen the Jim Shooter episode yet, please feel to jump on. I know this is a DC-centric yeah, episode, but take a little listen to that. He did get a start at DC, so he's got some stories that are relevant to that company. They are mentioned in there. Very just, relevant. It's yeah. very, very relevant. Uh, aside from that, keep an eye out. There's plenty more stuff to come. There is a nice stack of stuff that's being dropped on. Again, so it was just a busy couple of weeks with Wonder Woman and Easter. So thanks for hanging in there. We've got plenty more stuff coming your way. Back to the countdown? Well, should we have a little quick look? Yes. Really quick yes. look. I don't want to dwell on this too much. To it's that. going to be more of no, like a that, stream through of just what they've got coming up. So DC are releasing an absolute ton of Omnis. They really they recently announced a load of new books. It's incredibly exciting. Like, incre I'm, I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped. It's ridiculous. Some of these are reprints. Some of these have, have never been collected before. Some of them are collected in trades. So it's, it's a bit of a mix. Batman, Bruce Wayne, Murderer, Turn Fugitive, Omnibus. Deathstroke the Terminator, Volume 1, so we're going to get more of that. Superman Exile and other stories is going to get a reprint. Nice. Scalped, so we're heading into Vertigo territory, so that's the Jason Aaron and R.M. Guerra. Guerra. Okay, thank Guerra. you. I'm not sure. But that right. series is very popular, and it looks like it's going to be two volumes as well. Flash by Mark Wade, Omnibus Volume 2. John Constantine Hellblazer 1 is getting reprint. Aquaman by Peter David Omnibus, Green Lantern Core Omnibus Volume 2, Batman 66 is getting a reprint, Superman the Triangle Era Omnibus, Swamp Thing by Nancy Collins, Batman by Paul Dini is getting another reprint, Hitman and Batman Robin Adventures, Secret Six may kind of into the territory of the stuff we already knew. 
But that is a lot of omnis for DC. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. So I There's hope they stop announcing them because I can't afford it. <laughs> it's going to be You're a push as it kick. is. Yeah. You're I, on a DC I kick too. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about that triangle era Superman. Me I never too. thought it would be something they'd be so ambitious to do because I'm not really sure where exactly it stops, but it can be pretty extensive. Early I may 2000s. have to buy. So that's going to be like, that's going to be a series and a half. The, there is a bit of a gap though. So I think after the exile, there should be another couple of books before Death of Superman. There's a big chunk. There's almost a year's worth of comics missing. There's about a year's worth of comics that happen in between those two books. Right. And then there was Adventures in Superman. Yeah, so Adventures of Superman. That would four, that could be about seven, an omnibus. Two, I think we can get two out of it. Four, so, yeah, there's about a year's worth, and that normally ends up being about two. So it'd okay. yeah, be, yeah. be interesting to see if they fill that. I hope they do. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy with it all, but just like fill the gaps too. We want to see it all. Yeah. Let's get back into... Our picks, our picks. So I'm going to stick it to the Green Lantern universe. You had mentioned Sinestro. Yeah. I'm going to stick with Green Lantern. Again, in the Rebirth era. How Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps during the Rebirth era by Robert Venditti. It's a pretty strong title. Robert Venditti did a great run of Exo Man of War. So it doesn't surprise me that it's Hal Jordan and the Green Lanterns wouldn't, uh, he, he wouldn't have, you know, somewhat of a knack for it. But it's a, hard act to follow when Jeff Johns has kind of been the guy on that book for such a long period of time, redefining a character. Yeah. But Robert Venditti did a, a really decent job and I feel it's well-deserving of a cover to cover collection. The, it's funny because I actually had this series on a reserve list. It didn't quite make it for this episode, but okay. it was mixed with Green Lanterns, which was the Jessica Cruz and Simon Baz kind of yes. team up book team up yeah so I, I really wanted to to get both and i figured that they do where they relate i thought that might be a nice way to have both just do them together sure it's a series of volumes but either or really it's I, I i read the first six issues of rebirth and again i like i just lost track because i was reading so much stuff at the time yeah but i really regret not finishing it so seeing this in omnibus would be fantastic okay yeah, man. I'm okay. I'm time travel stealing from my past self, and it's from the Cave of Solitude when we when we did our DC run through, but do it, I've do it. changed it slightly. So okay. this is technically new. So my number four choice for tonight is the Dreaming, which is a Sandman spinoff. Now they've okay. been really good at collecting some of the stuff in either deluxe format or omnibus format or both. So Lucifer recently has had two volume omnibus series they've just done an omnibus for dead boy detectives you can get sandman in omnibus or deluxe books of magic three volume omnibus series so they're really making sure they collect all the stuff by the looks of it and that's what i want to do a big old read through so for that i need the dreaming so the dreaming i think could be a volume a two volume set it's the dreaming one to 60 the dreaming special sandman presents my pumpkin head agent of dreams sandman presents the th the thessa the th the thessal thessaliad the thessaliad is that how you say it one to four i can say one to four that's easy and sandman presents everything you always wanted to know about dreams but we're afraid to ask so the dreaming is set in the dreaming where the you know this this morpheus from the sandman resides and it's got characters like my pumpkin head uh, Cain and Abel. So it's all the background characters from Sandman, but they become the main characters in The Dreaming. Just sounds perfectly weird, and I love weird shit, so hit me up with it, please. And it's Vertigo. You just need to see more Vertigo stuff getting collected. But it's nice again. just to see. Yeah, again. It's, it's... An audience for it. Yeah. There's an audience for that stuff. I heard rumors they're going to bring Vertigo back. Okay. But I don't know how yeah, true well... that is. I think people would just... I don't know how people feel about Black Label being the new Vertigo when people are kind of brand, they have a brand loyalty because of like what it kind of represented. Mm. You know, just, just give us what we want. Give Let's us what put we it want. Under the, yeah. Give us everything. Give us all your money. No, it's the other nice. way around, isn't it? They take us. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Bastards. Cool. 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 Okay. Hey. 
All right. I don't know if I've ever listed this. And the reason why I'm, I, I want this now is because it was a series that began with a, a nice deluxe hardcover. And I bought it because I wanted, I was hoping like, hey, if I support it, chances of getting the next hardcover is higher. They released the next volume in softcover, which really bothers me. They never put it out in a hardcover. And I'm talking about Shazam by Jerry Ordway. Brilliant. I just want it in an omnibus now. Yeah. I know that it's a movie franchise that didn't take off the way you had hoped. And for whatever reason, a lot of the DC EU uh, franchises didn't. But who cares? There's a fan base for Shazam. Give us an omnibus. Jerry Ordway is well connected with the character, kind of like how, I mean, he was with Superman. Yeah. And then from there, he went on and did his own thing, writing and drawing Shazam. I don't know if he drew, he drew the graphic novel. He did. I think it was Peter series. Krauss did the art yeah. for, I don't know how long he was doing the art, Peter Krauss, but I think he did the earlier issues at least, because that's all I've read. Yes. Yes. But the, the main name associated with the character during a certain period of time was Jerry Ordway. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get that. It's weird they haven't done it. I'm really surprised they haven't done it. And it's weird the way they did do it. Like you say, they did a, a smaller hardcover and then they switched to trades. Like, that's not making anyone happy. And there are some people that won't care. But most people you'll see posting on Instagram just going, what's that f what the f are they well, thinking? I mean, Don't they understand us at all? <laughs> yeah, like why bother at that point? It seems like a bit of a slap in some really? ways because it's like it, we don't care. It doesn't matter. Here you go. And for some people, they won't matter, but for some people, it will. So why not just make it consistent and then everyone's happy? And then the really <laughs> anal people are happy and the non anal people are happy. So everyone just gets anal and everyone's <laughs> happy. No, that's wrong. That's all we do. <laughs> the. Did they re-release the first volume in soft cover? I don't think they did. I could be wrong, but I don't think they did. That's and the, I don't remember that myself. So I'm kind of like, you can't get the first volume in soft cover. Yeah. As an option. Mm -hmm. And then notice that most people bought the soft cover. Yeah. So let's release the second volume in soft cover. I don't remember the first volume. Maybe I'm I'm misremembering. But if if we are, correct us, because uh, if I start looking it up. I'm going to get distracted and maybe buy something. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens to me. <laughs> so someone else can know. But yeah, it's just just put it together. And and again, you've they've tried the other Shazam collections and, and series and including it here and there in different hardcover formats, right? Yeah. But this was, I think, the one time where the character had a whole like run. Significant, you know, three years or so. I think it's a thirty about issue, something 40, like late that. Late forties. Yeah. So what's that? It's four years. Yeah, it's it's a significant amount of time. So let's let's get it. Yeah, it makes so, perfect sense. To to answer BC Scrubs' question, was it Captain Marvel then, or is it New Fifty Two? It's 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 Captain Marvel, but it, it was still on the front cover. It was called Power of Shazam. So they after Crisis, they did a mini series which was called Power of Shazam: The New Beginning, which was written by Roy Thomas. Continuity wise, they got rid of that and they started again when they did a Parishazam graphic novel and then they launched that into an ongoing series. And there are a couple of crossover issues in there. There's not much, it largely stands alone. And it just it it restarted the continuity. So it kind of re explains it ditched that old the Roy Thomas thing and it went, Okay, this is the connection to Black Adam. This is where what Black Adam's about. This is what Billy Batson's about. And yeah, it's just a very sweet series. It really is. Yeah, it, it, it's got just enough character and charm for it to stand on its own. Like, it's Michael Manley art. I looked ah. it up now. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, let's, yeah, let's get that, let's get that in a nice deluxe format. I think he let's did do Dark it. Hawk. Done that Back sure. in the day. I could be wrong. You're probably right, knowing your memory. <laughs> but yeah. That's why I don't trust it. <laughs> I know my real name. I can look actually. Yeah, you're right. Dark Hawk. Dark Hawk. I looked oh. in the, the. It sounds very inappropriate to say that and not fast enough. Maybe that's the say it really why. fast three times. No, no, that's okay. I just realized that ridiculous <laughs> comic book title name. Ah, uh, it doesn't. Bitches. It doesn't. It's not a problem when you're English. It's just Dark Hawk. Doesn't. 
doesn't matter. For All you, right. sir, whoa, you got trouble. Yeah. My mom is probably saying it right now while she's watching this. What do they mean, Dark Hawk? <laughs> and laughing. She's laughing right now. Please phone it, record it, and send it. We'll play it next time. We're on the. We'll use it in the, uh, the jingle at the start. Okay, do you want my final? Yes, yes. Okay, I've got a controversial one for you. For my final. I like it. Okay. Do it. Recently, they announced the Marvel vs. DC Omnis, which I didn't mention in that list just now because we kind of established they're coming. So there's a Marvel vs. DC Omnibus and a Marvel vs. DC The Amalgam Age Omnibus on the way. They've recently changed the listings. They've taken two issues out of the Amalgam Omnibus. They were written by Gerard Jones. So Gerard Jones has served time in prison but has since come out. By all means, look him up in your own time. I don't think he's someone who's going to be coming back to comics. I can understand DC not wanting him to get any cash for, for the omnibus that they're releasing for the Marvel versus DC stuff. Marvel have recently released an, a Wonder Man omnibus, including the stuff that Gerard Jones wrote. The, my take on it is this, and people can disagree and be upset if they want, but go for it. This is what we should be able to debate these things. Like grown-ups, willies. So my take on it is this. Other people worked on that series. Other people worked on those books. Why should they lose out? Find a way, a loophole to stop him getting paid. And pay everyone else who deserves to get paid. I agree. That's I also take. think, I agree. It's not, and I and I feel that way about a lot of other um, things within the artistic world, television shows and whatnot. Like, that's not the only person who did a good job making this show. There's a lot of other performances and actors and that you can't, forget everything they did either it's not fair yeah it's really not fair anyway and past that controversy my choice for tonight is guy gardner warrior this is my favorite green lantern he's one of my top five dc characters i love guy gardner and that is why i selfishly want this book <laughs> not at the expense of anything morals but i really want this book it's a great, it's, it's just, it's a great character. I love him. He's a dick. He's a dick. And I love Guy Gardner. So in the book, I'd like to see Guy Gardner Reborn 1 to 3, Guy Gardner 1 to 16, the follow-on series, which was Guy, well, the continuation when the title swapped. So it was Guy Gardner Warrior from 17 to 44, annual number one. And then there's some tie-in stuff with Action Comics 709, Dark Stars 37, Hawkman 22 to 23, Justice League America 83, 101, and Showcase 96. One to two? I think, have I got that right? I think it was one to two. That should cover it. I love Guy nice. Gardner. I would like to see two volumes, please. Because you could probably nice. you probably need a couple of volumes to cover all that off. But I don't know what the odds are. The odds are looking pretty slim at the moment, which is a real shame because fans miss out on on their character and those other creators who I'm assuming were perfectly legit people. They got to get paid too. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that question in the Marvel versus DC or DC versus Marvel. I'm not the or sure the order of the Omni that's coming out. Does it include the treasury editions that yeah. were everything that like the batman and hulk everything nice. it's my understanding it's I, I double checked it because i wasn't sure i thought they'd left some stuff out but it's because Bat batman and hulk is actually like you say it's a treasury edition it's called like dc presents treasury edition or something like that for if you want to double check jump on the omniversecomics.guide website and the listings for what is included in the books is on there nice that's cool that's very cool oh and i do that's need exciting. to shout out meat trunks for that choice because that has been on my reserve list for two years, <laughs> but he mentioned it in the last episode and I can't prove him wrong that he didn't come up with this. All right. I'm surprised it hasn't been made. I'm not sure again, if there's some sort of thing holding it up. These three books. Yeah. From Greg Rucka, Wonder Woman. Yeah. I haven't read it all, but it's always well received. The reason why when he came back to the rebirth, era of dc people were excited because that run was so well received or so i and i've understood and mm -hmm. what i've read of it is quite nice like the hikatea storyline with the wonder woman batman and i think it's jg jones that does, the, jones, or does yeah. the cover. Yeah. yeah really really Covers good story yeah 
when people refer to certain things about Diana, even what you get from the movies, you you kind of grasp that it comes from this characterization of her, like exploration yeah. of her. So make it an omnibus already. It's one of your main characters, right? Probably one of the most complete sort of beginning to end stories of or or exploration of the character in an interesting way, mm-hmm. modern in a way that people can get into, do it. And Greg Rucka, like he's, this is where he was really cutting his teeth in the DC universe and where it crosses over with, I think this is just before Crisis yeah, or Infinite Crisis. Yeah, this leads Crisis. into, yeah, because it's got the sacrifice crossover in it. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's really strong stuff. He really takes takes that character to an interesting place. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. It's got it. It's Do gotta it. become. Maybe we'll see it next year. It has to be. I'm just so surprised. They've put the Phil Jimenez one. The Gail Simone one is being reprinted. Yeah, there's plenty there's of them. Tons they, of Wonder Woman. Just not this one. Just not that one, which is probably the most popular. Well, no, George Perez is yeah. probably the most popular, but yeah. Then Greg Rucker. Yeah, I would say so. Maybe yeah. Azarello. I think you're right. Azarello's good too. But mm. again. And that's had an omnibus. It's easy. Exactly. Yeah. And absolutes. Yeah. Strange. Yeah, weird. Really weird. Anyways. Nice. All right. I got a, I got a few for for next year. Save them up. Save them up and we'll All be right. back and we'll do this again. And what, there might not be any left because DC have probably announced tons more books coming up. So we won't get to do these anymore. I know. It's it's getting harder to do Most Wanted because they're just, you know they're coming. Yeah. You're just going to have to do favorite of that year. <laughs> The best ones they need to reprint. It's gonna get, Exciting yeah. show that would be. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Don't forget to uh, hit that like and subscribe button at the end of the show. Visit omniversecomics.guide for all your reading orders, reading reviews, podcast videos, collector item specials. Everything's there. Check it out. <laughs>